So what we're going to do for the rest of this class is a bit of mathematics to work out what combination of length contraction, time dilation, and relative simultaneity do we need to be consistent with this principle. Right. Okay. Okay, so first of all, let me just, again, briefly clearly define what we mean by length contraction, time dilation, and relative simultaneity in words. Okay. So the first one is length contraction. And this says that the length of an, a moving object is contracted in the direction it's moving. So I'll draw a picture for that. So suppose that you've got a stationary object, take a rectangle like this. When the object is stationary, it has a length L. Okay. Now if the same object is moving with some speed u, then its length appears to be shorter. So we'll call the new length L prime. So we can relate the two by saying that L prime is equal to some constant alpha times L. Okay, some factor alpha times L. Okay? So that's the notation I'm going to use here. Okay, and it's a contraction. That means L prime should be less than L. So therefore, alpha should be between 0 and 1. Okay? And also note that alpha is a function of, of speed. Right? So the amount of contraction depends upon the speed that you're moving. Okay. So that defines length contraction. Okay, next we've got time dilation. This says that moving clocks tick more slowly. So suppose that I've got a stationary clock. Which measures a certain amount of time t. Then an identical clock which is moving will measure less time. So it will measure an amount of time t prime. And again, I can write down a formula. t prime is less than t. Right? So t prime is equal to some factor beta times t. Okay? Where again, beta is something between 0 and 1. And beta is a function of the, the speed of the clock. So that defines what we mean by um, time dilation. Finally, I'll define what we mean by relative simultaneity. So I, this one is a bit more complicated, so two clocks. With a constant velocity with the same velocity are separated. motion. Okay. 
then if an observer moving with the clocks thinks the clocks are synchronized, that means clicking together, then a stationary observer thinks that the clocks are out of sync. Okay, and let me draw a picture for that. Okay, so if it's stationary, I've got the co-moving observer here. Relative to him, the clocks are stationary, and he thinks the clocks show the same time t. But if I take the same situation when it's moving, relative to another observer, okay, moving this way is velocity u, then he thinks the time are different. He thinks if this one shows a time t1 and this one shows a time t2, then he thinks that t2 is behind t1. It was less time than t1. So t2 is equal to t1 minus some amount which we'll call delta. Okay, so delta is the time difference between the two clocks here. This, so they show different times when this observer thinks they are synchronized. Okay, so this is the, the final formula here. Okay, and in this case, note that delta will depend upon the speed at which the clocks are moving, and it will also depend upon the separation between the clocks. Okay? So L here is the separation between the clocks here. So the further separated they are, the bigger the time difference between the two.